Hello everyone. Today we are all about the green revolution, which is actually not about anything with the buzzword green. Um, it's a different thing. It's not hybrid cars or plastic bag bans or any of that. It was really a movement that happened in the 60s that involved agriculture. And our content objective is to understand why so many indigenous farmers from around the world would uh, abandon their traditional methods of agriculture to embrace, uh, I guess, the first world's uh, tools and techniques that we uh, we offer them and sometimes to their detriment and so the first question is is why wouldn't we offer those countries uh, the, the tools that have helped us uh, we're, we're producing more food than we ever have in the history of humanity so why not share our skills and so there's going to be some notes as always uh, and this is basically it that I've got a bunch of, of pictures to show you guys and so really the essential questions are the what the when the why uh, of the green revolution and also what were some of the consequences of the of the revolution and so uh, the what is basically it was an effort to make modern farming that we had going on here in the United States available to other less developed countries um, and the people that were involved or the organizations involved were largely the Rockefellers and the Ford Foundation so Ford from Ford cars you know they've got a, a little bit of money in their in their bank account and the Rockefellers are like one of the wealthiest organizations to ever uh, have graced the earth and so this is John D Rockefeller right there uh, and he started Standard Oil now which has become Exxon Oil so you know they've got a multi-billion dollar country, uh, company and so, uh, I mean, we know Exxon's done all kinds of wonderful things for the world. Uh, but John D. Right, the Rockefellers really were a, a philanthropic organization. They wanted to do well with their money, and, uh, and they did a lot of different phil philanthropy projects. This particular one uh, happened in the 60s. Why did they want to do it? Was it out of the goodness of their heart? Or are we going to be kind of conspiracy theorists? Um, you know, we don't exactly know what was going on, but... Uh, the, the baseline, here's why we said we wanted to do it, was to help people feed themselves. And so uh, what essentially uh, is that the, the root of what the Green Revolution was is we had all these seeds that were being developed up here in the United States. And ironically, we're taking seeds from like Latin America and Asia, you know, see, uh, indigenous uh, farmers had made these seeds for thousands of years. We bring them up here and we start doing hybrids or hybrid work with them and now uh, genetically modifying these seeds that had been developed by other countries, but somehow they're in our hands now and we're applying some magical science to it. Uh, but if you take a look at this graph, you can see whatever we're doing is working. So the, the, the yield on these seeds and what they're able to grow has just been, you know, it looks like it's exponential. It's like it's been increasing quite a bit over uh, time. And so um, that's, I guess, a positive result of the Green Revolution is like we're feeding more people. But is that really what it was all about? Um, and so some people say that uh, it was trying to uh, curb communism when, uh, I guess, history shows when, when countries are hungry, uh, they typically have uprisings and agrarian reforms, and sometimes that can be a dangerous thing politically. Uh, others might say that we are now, we basically wanted these countries to switch over to growing crops that we want here in the first world so that we would like, these countries would start growing these crops and then we would import these crops um, to basically, so it's kind of self-serving, this is what you should grow, we'll buy it from you. And then others uh, would say that along with these high yielding seeds that we've kind of, uh, you know, passed off, you know, it's not quite, you don't just put them in the ground, you need to have fertilizers, you need to have tractors, you need to have pesticides, you need to, it's a lot more energy intensive. And so, you know, we'll give you these seeds, but then you need all these other supplies that you can conveniently purchase from us. And so it's kind of mixed um, of what is the underlying rationale for why we did this. But as they always say, if you can control the food, you've got the power but um, just in terms of success stories here uh, back to this slide I mean that that's really it so we can't discount this more people in, in the end more people uh, had access to food people are growing more food on less land um, and people aren't starving to death and so maybe the story should end right there in India uh, back in the time of this let me I got a slide here 
here it is. Uh, India w was way short on rice and they were looking at mass starvation. And so we, uh, part of the Green Revolution was giving them a high yielding uh, variety of rice and they were managed to increase their food output by 10 times. I mean, that's huge. So what what's not good about that? But, uh, and then here's another, uh, another slide just to show you uh, the, the success of it. And the thing to notice down here is the black dots are the areas harvested. And so the land has not increased. So it's not like with the world population getting bigger and bigger and bigger, we need more and more farmland. We haven't been doing that. Um, and the amount of seeds hasn't increased either. It's just the yield per seed and total production. And so we're going to wrap up this part one of the the little flip lecture series with just a couple pros. Uh, in addition to India, that same story applies to several places around the world where you've got overall uh, food production increasing uh, more than ever before and people are not starving to death. Enough said. Or is it enough said? I've got a whole nother six minutes coming at you with more to say. So come back in a second. I'll see you again.